In this video, we're going to learn how to set up your pricing, establish your multipliers, and maintain your pricing in AutoBid Mechanical. So let's just take a quick look here first at our piping items. I want you to see our piping items, and I'm going to actually take a look at, uh, let's copper pipe first. And you can see when we're looking at the price tab, we have a manufacturer and we have a date of the price update of when the price changed for the manufacturer's pricing sheet. We could also see here's the list prices for this. And these items, the list price, the date, and the manufacturer are keyed off the trade service UPC code if we're using trade service for a pricing update, or it would be keyed off the Harrison price code if we were using Harrison. Now in this video, we're gonna focus on using trade service. Now these list prices would need to be discounted to be competitive on a bid. If we take a look at the size multipliers tab, we could see that this, these list prices through size eight use this multiplier name, P2000, and by the way, P means for pipe, two means copper, P1 would be steel, P3 would be cast iron, F1 would be steel for fittings, and, and so there is a method to this multiplier name. We have a description, copper tube zero, and we have the multiplier as it is when you first install a clean database from Autobid Mechanical, and then the date that we happen to create that multiplier name. So one of our goals here is gonna to be to set up these multipliers, and here's the multiplier list, and we need to find out what the discount would be, what the multiplier we would apply to this copper tubing. Well, one of the first and most important steps is to make sure your pricing is up to date. So this is a fresh install, but the prices might be some period of time old. So we're gonna see how that works and we're gonna use the Trade Service Online Link Update Manager. So I will open that up. Now, when we come into here in the Update Link Manager, we can see that there's a update pending. So I'm gonna right click on that and we're gonna to choose to do the update now. Now this may take a few minutes to do. Um, so I'm just gonna pause the video here while it runs and we'll come back and see what kind of information comes through with that pricing update. Now once that price update is complete and we get successful, we can move on and start working on the material multipliers. Now there's a couple different ways of doing it and I think one way that makes good sense to do it is you have to target the materials that your company uses the most often. So you could do that by taking off a few of your typical jobs. Now I just happen to be working here with an office building. Okay? So take off some jobs, have those materials you use the most. So in the case here we can see we've got some black carbon steel and some cast iron husky clamps and some copper with A53 butt weld steel. And we've got these materials that are very common to our company. And that's what we're gonna work on for our material multipliers first. So I'm going to calculate this job and I wanna make sure that the material multipliers are being used so we could see them. Now, having focused on our most common materials, when we come into this material multiplier worksheet, we can see those common materials and the multipliers that need to be, the multiplier names that need to be adjusted for the work that we do. This is a much shorter, concise list than the 300 items or 300 list items that we saw earlier. Now, looking down this list for this particular project, and this is a typical project for us, I'm going to focus on the items with the biggest amounts on them. So here I'm looking at copper NIPCO fittings. I could see F2700, and I could see I've got $155,000. I'm not gonna worry about the net here because that was our fixtures, equipment, miscellaneous, and specialties on this job. I can see, oh, here's my copper tubing by zero. I got $110,000 worth of materials on this job. I've got my black carbon steel. So this is a good way to start. And I'm gonna pick these off and I'll maybe go to cast iron after that and work my way down going the largest items to smallest items. Now here's the multiplier and then here's the net cost and then here's the date of that multiplier. Now, 
1.0 is how the software ships. We don't have material, manufacturers, material multipliers in the software. That's something you need to establish with your vendor. So now, <clears throat> knowing which ones are the biggest items, those are the ones I'm going to work on. It may be handy to go ahead and print this out and have a copy um, to look at. Now that I know which multipliers I need to work on, I need to contact my vendor and give them that same information so they could work on a set of discounts for us. All right? Now we do have a report that is pretty handy to do that, and it's called the Vendor Multiplier Report. Now I am going to use some of our filtering tools here so that I'm going to filter by report category so that I don't end up sending them information on our labor or maybe the fixtures and equipment. They don't need to worry about that. So I'm gonna make a list here of pipe and fittings. Uh, I could do hangers if I'm working on hangers now and possibly my valves. And I definitely wanna send the pipe. So I'm filtering it by report category to the items that are affected by material multipliers. So I'll click okay and I can go ahead and run this report. Okay, so now that this report's here, we can see the first thing that showed up here was happens to be the pipe, and it's broken down to carbon, steel, and cast iron, and copper. Um, here's the description of that. Here's the size. Here's the quantities on this particular job. And here is the, the manufacturer's list price. We're going to send them that information, and they would tell us what we're going to get for a discount on these items. Now, steel is a little different because it's more like a commodity and doesn't really have a brand to it. So they're going to take these list prices, which are Chicago area commodity pricing, and they'll give us a discount on them, hopefully. Cast iron, we can see here it's cast iron, it's no hub, it's Tyler. And then again, the sizes and the list price. Copper, we can see it's that zero hard tubing. And here's the, that was for drainage. And here's our type L copper. And again, it's zero, same multiplier. P2000 for both these, sizes, quantity, and price. When we get the multipliers back from them, um, we can go into and find that multiplier name and put that multiplier value in there. Now, the easiest way to send them probably would be to print this and print it as a PDF. And so you can make it a PDF and then email it off to them. Now, we may want to filter this a little more fine-tuned than what we've done here. Let's say, for example, we come into and we want to send a list off to somebody who specifies, specializes in copper. So I'm going to open this list up and I can come in here and I could just pick the copper specs. And if I now run that report, just like we've seen before, it's going to be a much shorter report. And you can see it's it's focused on copper and it's focused on threader lets fell into the copper sizes. But we can go ahead and see all our copper fittings here. Again, and the list price, and then it could work us out and tell us what our discount is off this list price. The way the multipliers work in the reports, and let's just take a look at recap of total cost. It's a pretty common report to run. The way it works is it takes the quantity times the list price times the multiplier and gives us a material cost. Same thing here, it takes the quantity times the list price times the multiplier and gives us a cost. So right now, again, these are still 1.0. So imagine if the vendors called us back and they told us what our multipliers are for those items. So I'm gonna actually work on the copper ones first. So I can do it at the project level here and then save that project level information to the master list. So I'm gonna open this up. And they told us that our multiplier on the copper NIPCO fittings was a 0.45. And I can come in here now and I can make sure I wanna put today's date on it. So I know when I did this. I know that one's up to date. 
And they told us that on our copper pipe that the multiplier was a 0.40. And you can see how this has actually been applied. So it took this $110,000 and brought it down to $44,000 using that multiplier. So we would go ahead and plug in the items and the multipliers as we got them back from our vendor. Once we've done that and we close this, it's going to prompt us to recalculate that for our job. And we can recalculate it if we want. But here's the key step. We need to get these multipliers that we worked on, that we targeted for the materials we use the most, into the master tables. So we've got a pretty neat tool here. We can take our project material multipliers that we've just worked on, and we can go and save those to the master list. So I'm going to use the Copy Save As button here. And we have a number of options. And one of them is to save this project's material multipliers into the master list. Likewise, had we worked on the material multipliers in the master list and we wanted to bring it into our project, we could bring it into our project once again. Okay, So we're going to pick this option here. Now we have some choices down here. Um, this one would just add any new rows that we added into our project. This would delete all the rows and do a complete override of this list up here. And we could do just updating the values only. So that's what we're going to do here. And when I hit the copy, it's going to tell you, well, you're going to be overriding the numbers in this, and there's, it's OK to proceed. And those two multipliers that we set up were now copied over into our master list. So if we close this and we go down to our master tables, and we go into our master material multipliers, we will see and be able to confirm that those multipliers came through. So there's our copper fittings, NIPCO 0.45. If we want to verify this in our piping items tables, we can come in here and here's the piping that we worked on. And you can see the multiplier now there is a 0.4. And if we go down and take a look at our fittings, And I'll just take a look at one of the fittings. And you can see that multiplier is a 0.45. So we're able to get this copper done already. So all these copper fittings in our copper pipe has a material multiplier. I might work on the steel next and cast iron after that and PVC and whatever other materials you need. It's going to take a little bit of time, a little bit of coordination with your vendors to get these things set up. But now in the future, when we create a new job, that new job and I'm just going to go through the add project, you'll notice on the second screen of the project wizard, it's going to copy those master multipliers in. And this job will have good multipliers and will be able to calculate it and be able to have pricing that represents what we pay in a bid. Now let's say you've gone through your systems and you've set up your multipliers for your most common materials. Um, and then you could work on other materials as they come along. You know, tackle that polyethylene when it comes through or that polypropylene when it comes through or that stainless steel when it comes through. But get your, your bread and butter materials in there. Now, once you've established your initial material multipliers based on a, a pricing update that you recently had done, you may need to do some maintenance on them to keep those multipliers up to date as price updates occur. Now, earlier we ran a price update using the Trade Service Online Link Manager. And I'm going to take a look at the log for that. So I will go to the Trade Service Pricing Area. And here we can see the log for that last price update. And we can see down here at the bottom that we're filtered showing the items, the rows, with price changes. 5,739 items were changed in this most recent price update. Our log shows the description, the size, the UPC code, and interesting, the new price and the old price and the percent change. So we could see here that Anvil International on their grooved fittings has done about a 6% price increase. Now, some of these fittings had a price decrease. Uh, again, and we can see the 6% price increase there. And we can see the multiplier that may need to be adjusted for this new list pricing. It's F 
1200 now I've got 5,000 items to look at here it would be kind of intimidating to go ahead and scroll down through this and try to figure all these out but we have this cool drag to feature and I could drag this up here and now it gives me a an ability to look at these things by the material multiplier name so I've put the multiplier up here and now I can see the names now it's just a matter of opening up the tree and I could see everything that's that's affected by the F1200 multiplier. And this happens again to be the Malibu iron groove lock type fittings. And if this is something I use, then I'm gonna to need to contact my vendor and let them know we had a recent price update. Now, if I come in here and I'm just gonna select any one of these items and then go up here to this dollar sign button and it's gonna open up that price table. I could take a look and I could see that's the price, here's the manufacturer, and here's the date that these prices become effective. I could see the price and again the trade service code. So I could contact my vendor if we're buying these type of fittings and let them know that we've done a recent price update with this date on it and does my multiplier change? And if he indicates that it did change, I could just simply come to my size multipliers tab. I'm gonna work on the master multipliers. I'll hit the multipliers button here and I could know that's exactly the one that changed. I can go in here and put the new price multiplier in there if, if it has one, okay? And I could put the date on it that this change was effective. So now everything that used the master multiplier list, the future jobs will have this new multiplier applied to it. And then I would simply close this tree, scroll down, take a look at the next one into malleable iron fittings. I can go in here and I can pick one of the malleable iron fittings and I can see that they're all using this same F1400. And I can come in there and take a look at the date that it happened, go to my size multipliers, hit the multipliers button and make that adjustment to whatever that might be. If I want to change it for my current project, we have this radio button here and it allows me to work on the project multiplier. So notice this is just for this project right here and that would be affecting that only. So the master multipliers is for all the jobs in the future and this would be for our current job. Once we've worked through all these, we have confidence to know that our list prices are up to date and our discounts, the multipliers are up to date. To request a demo or learn more about Trimble MEP products, visit us at mep.trimble.com or find the right link for you in the description. Thanks for watching.